Greetings. Hello. Hello, hello. If anyone out there can let me know if the sound is great before I get started. I'm looking at who's joining us. Great. Well, I hear that the sound is good, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. First, I'd like to say thank you to the Women's Alzheimer's Movement for extending me their platform today and inviting me to be on, as well as to say hello to the entire Women's Alzheimer's Movement's social media community. So hello, and then of course, if anyone's come over from Nutritious Movement, where I'm from, hello to you as well. My name is Katie Bowman, for those of you that don't know. I'm gonna be talking about movement today. Um, I'm gonna be talking about how to get more movement, how to fit more movement into your life. Uh, I don't know if you can just raise your hands right now. You don't even have to raise your hand with an icon, but if you feel like how well you're taking care of your body right now has gone down a bit, how much you're moving right now just doesn't um, feel like what you would like it to be. This presentation is for you. I'm right there with you. Uh, but I have spent a lot of time thinking about movement, converting my spaces for more movement for a decade. So I have lots of tips and an approach that I think um, works well, that you can uh, take little pieces and see if you can add more movement to your, to your world. I'm in my office today. My home where I live a little bit farther away from here doesn't have good internet. My home has been featured in plenty of publications um, because my house is built around the idea of movement. The, not the house itself, but the way that I've set up my furniture or lack thereof furniture so that I can get more movement. But we're in my office right now and what makes this office such a great space to have a conversation about more movement uh, is because this this office is also what I would call a dynamic workspace. So um, before I go any further, I just want to let you know about my background. I'm a biomechanist, which means I study how movement works. And that can mean as on the scale of you know how your body bends and lifts and generates force and how you do certain exercises and the form of those exercises to the to the larger perspective of how how movement works in our lives or isn't working in our lives. So what I'm going to do is start with a little lesson. I love lessons. And I love diagrams. So I'm going to draw this here for you very quickly and I promise there's not going to be any math. But I am, I am going to try to break down the difference between Movement, physical activity, and exercise. So this is a large circle called movement. So movement is simply a change in your state, a change in your physical state. You can think of it as a change in your position, but it's not only a change in your position that you can see, it's also the change in the position of your cells. So it's really any change of state is the most all-encompassing statement I can say about it. But within movement is a smaller classification called physical activity. I feel like I should be wearing glasses for this. So this is where you kind of start to think, well, what's the difference between movement and physical activity? Well, physical activity is a subgroup of movement, and it means that in order for something to qualify as physical activity, you have to use your musculoskeletal system and you have to be burning calories. So it has to be, uh, I'm going to use the word vigorous or intense enough to burn calories, but there is also what's considered very light activity and it would still fall under physical activity. So it doesn't have to be intense per se, but you 
have to have some, usually a noticeable change in position. And then there's a smaller group inside of physical activity and, exer uh, physical activity and movement called exercise. So when we think of movement, we're usually thinking of exercise. Exercise is, again, it's a, it's a subset of movement and physical activity. You are also using your musculoskeletal system, usually in a repetitive way. You are also expending calories while you do it. But you're usually, when you're exercising, you're pursuing movement simply for the sake of um, physical fitness, physical improvement. And that's usually the only thing that's going on while you're exercising. So think of taking an exercise class or uh, following a routine on a DVD or just if you have one in your mind that you're doing, you're going to get on your bike and you're going to try to ride for 30 minutes. So when you approach movement in that way, that's what makes it exercise. It's not necessarily what you're doing with your body. It's the intention that you sit around it. So because we are a very sedentary culture, we have come up with this concept of exercise. And exercise is how we have learned to move our body. And we are in a time right now where exercise, because it's really the only sort of movement we know and think about anymore, when it's not available in its ready format, when because we've sort of parsed out exercise from all other movement, you need a special place for movement, you need a special outfit for movement, you need an instructor for movement, you need a routine for movement, but you don't really need any of those things for movement, you need those things for exercise. So we are sort of at a creative loss when we don't know how to get that exercise because the spaces that we have sort of regulated for where we get our movement aren't available. So what I want to show you is how to take your notion of movement out of this realm and move it into this realm. Because once you start approaching your movement from a physical activity, um, more than exercise or in addition to exercise mentality, you will find that the physical characteristics that you are after, which are those changes in state, are available to you almost all of the time, even when you're at work. So we're going to start with the work environment. I'm going to set down my, sadly, I'm going to sadly set down my, my chart and my pen. And I'm going to move you over to what I imagine, for many of you, might be a familiar setup. So what do we have here? We have a chair. It swivels, but does it really move any other way? Not so much. We have a desk. We have our laptop situation. So for many individuals, this is the environment in which they have to put themselves in order to do their work, like their, their contribution. It's, it's their livelihood is in this particular environment. When I look at this environment, I look at it from a geometry perspective. I'm a biomechanist, so I think in terms of geometry. And when I look at the shape of your body that's needed in order to perform your work, I see one shape. So there's nothing really wrong with sitting. There's nothing really wrong with working at a desk in itself. These are perfectly fine body positions. The issue is that you're doing them for hours on end. And then what happens is when you have an exercise mentality, you're like, oh, I need to go exercise. I've been sitting here for hours and hours and hours and I need something. It's almost like the idea of um, you wanna exercise off how long you've been sitting. But what I like to point out is you're really adapting all the time. Your body in the same way that you are reaping the adaptation from exercise, you're, re you're reaping the adaptation to sitting too. So the first thing that you can do without even leaving the work setup that you have right now is simply to sit differently inside your chair. So instead of always slouching in the same position, always holding yourself in one position, you actually can change your body position while you are working at your same setup. So that could be bringing, you know, one leg 
uh, across the other leg. You can think of some of the floor stretches or maybe um, other stretches that you've done in a yoga class or if you've ever done physical therapy, if you were given something to improve the mobility of your hips or your knees, oftentimes those moves slot in so that you can still have your work in front of your face. You can still be reading online, listening on phone calls, thinking while you're at work, while you're productive. You can still be in place, but not all of your parts have to be still. So you can play with that a little bit. The second thing you can do is actually change your seat. So I'm gonna move this out of the way, bye-bye, and we're gonna roll this in. So this is what? This is an exercise ball. It's an exercise ball, but it's extra beautiful. And the reason I like an extra beautiful exercise ball, this is from uh, Venn Dynamic Furniture, is simply for this reason. We're, we are used to our homes being beautiful, usually sedentary spaces. Um, they're not really conducive to movement. They have, you know, that's where you have your nicer fabrics, you have your art, you have, you have the pieces that represent who you are and the aesthetic that you like. Your exercise stuff looks like stuff that goes at the gym. And so you're not really triggered or signaled to move when you look at your furniture at home because one, it doesn't look like the things that you're used to moving on. So this is about changing the signal of the environment. I'm very much um, a fan of modifying your environment to remind you to move. So surrounding yourself with dynamic options, replacing sedentary options with more dynamic options would be one way to do this. And when you get onto this seat, right, what can you do? You can move a whole lot more. My face can be in front of the camera, but I can actually be moving my legs. I'm right now bending and straightening my legs while I'm sitting here. I can lift my feet up off the ground and I can balance and I can do core exercise you know, while I am still more or less in place and while I'm certainly inside my home. So sometimes just investing in a piece of two or if you already have one, bringing it out. We're gonna talk um, in a little bit about maybe now is the time to start clearing space for more movement in the environments that you are spending more time in. Because if you are used to not spending so much time at home and you're used to going off specifically now to move, you might need to now consider that you need your home to serve more purposes than what it does at the end of the day. If at the end of the day you come home and you sort of rest and recover in your home, but you've been resting and recovering all day in your home, something to sort of spice up your house a little bit and make it a little bit more dynamic throughout the day will help you do things like um, build up those steps. And I can actually, I've never been able to say this, but I can say this right now, hi mom, I can see my mom watching me right now, that's amazing. Okay, so one of the questions that we got was, if I'm gonna be working from home more now, should I invest in a like more dynamic or standing workstation? So my, my perspective is instead of thinking about there's one optimal chair, one optimal desk setup that works, is to recognize that what you're looking for is a setup that allows you to work in a variety of positions. So a dynamic workspace is what I like to provide. So you saw us dynamic it up just by you changing your own position at will, changing your chair, this is our office's standing workstation. There's a little bit of a backlight, so I'm trying to move around so you can see it pretty well. Oh, let me move my giant sign. So this is actually, it's actually a kitchen microwave rack that we got at a thrift store. Thrift stores are amazing places. This does not have to be an expensive endeavor at all. Um, you could set up something more permanent. I like to I like a variety of workspaces so I can take my laptop seated, I can move it up high, and as I'll show you, I can also take it down low. Um, so this is a specific piece of furniture that allows you to stand and move. And then while I'm standing and moving, you can put things underneath your feet. So this 
dome is a great way to stretch your calves. So one of the reasons standing, one of the reasons we sit so much for office work is when you have to stand all day, it can actually take its toll on your legs. So instead of standing and not moving, you can stand and add some movement while you're standing just by stepping or angling your feet uphill. And then there's so many, do you have any exer do you have any old exercise equipment collecting cobwebs in your garage? That could be old rebounders or trampolines or BOSUs or any sort of balancing, things that your kids or your teenagers might have had, you know, when they're practicing surfing and ergo boards. It's, we tend to have those things around. We tend to not think of them as office furniture, but they're gonna have to become our office furniture. So this is actually a, an, uh, a wobble board, but I can stand on it while I'm at, standing at my workstation. So it's not only changing my state from seating to standing while I'm standing, I'm also constantly varying up my movement while I'm there. So that's one option is get a actual standing desk. But another thing, I'll set this down here for just a second is, if you've got something like a tote, right? Let us pull this out of a closet. If you have a tote, if you have a crate, what you can do is you can set it on top of your desk. And then if you have a laptop, you can just move it over. So you, you don't even have to have the room uh, to have to have two separate desks. You can slightly modify with something that you already have, and then when you're tired of standing or you'd like to vary it up, then you just remove the tote. So again, really simple options. Um, another, another modifier that we do with the environment, I'm all about the cheap and fast modifiers, um, our arms. So I think with seats, we're really thinking about what's our lower half doing, but think about the computer. Think about how much time you've had your phone in your hand or how much time you've been working on your laptop, you're, we're just sort of rounded, we're tight through these areas, our arms barely go overhead as it is, and now they're even going overhead less so. So I like, I, one of my go-to movements for a quick re-energizer, um, I, I feel like it stretches my wrists, my elbows, my shoulders, my neck, um, my back, my upper back, is getting my arms overhead. And I'm gonna show you a variety of ways. If you're like, there's no way I could hang from a bar right now. One thing you can do is simply add these little post-it notes. Ah, I'll bring it down here. The little post-it notes that say arm reach. It just is a little reminder because when you, it's like, you already have the intention to move. You have the desire to move. You, you have, you know, if you've read anything in the last 10 years, you know that movement will make you both be and feel better. What we're missing are the cues. We're missing the cues to move more. The work that you can do is simply create the cues yourself. So that's one cue. Another cue that we have is just who's familiar with the, with the head forward all day on the computer position. I'll just set this here and see if this looks familiar to anybody. Anyone? Anyone? Is my head forward? You know, you can see how far forward my face is. It's like I would like to climb into my computer screen. So over time, what happens is your head is a particular weight, and as it moves forward, there's just more torque that's happening on the upper body. And there's a simple movement that you can do when your head is forward, which is not really to lift the whole body up, but to just pull the head back. We call it head ramping and nutritious movement. And it's just a, it's a slide back without lifting your chest. And what it does is it lengthens the back of your neck. It's a great stretch for the top of your shoulders. Um, it's so, what's the best word to say? It's, it's so subtle. It's very subtle. It's a small movement that really transforms multiple joints all at once. So I like to do it, I made it up, but I forget to do it just like everyone else because I'm easily sucked into what I'm working on. So how I have come up with the solution to remind myself, to remind myself of the posture is by putting a little head ramping sticker. This could just be a post-it. You could just, 
you're gonna, you're gonna, everyone's gonna have to go buy a big stack of post-its or just tape up a bunch of signs going, move your head back, uh, stop slouching or, or whatever it is for you that you've figured out. Um, if you've ever gone to physical therapy and have been told an adjustment, create the environment that reminds you to do that adjustment. Okay, I know we're running out of time. Um, all right, so I said hanging is one of my favorite things to do. So we've got, I, the one investment that I've made for so much inside time is actually getting uh, a hanging bar. So this is a freestanding setup, but you can go to like a, any exercise equipment chain that you have in your town and usually get something for less than 20 bucks that just goes into a doorway. So it's super available. And you can simply hold on and let yourself hang. I have found myself, if I don't have anything in my house and I'm not leaving my house, the chances of me really challenging my upper body in a, in a strength to weight ratio sort of way is almost zero. But if I have something, every time I walk by it, I will do it. So it's very easy for me to get something more like 30 pull-ups in a day, not as a set, but when I come towards it, I'll just go ahead and do a pull, or if I'm fatigued from that, I'll hang, or if neither one of those feel available, I'll just go back to that doorway reach. So when you've created this environment that signals you to move, that communicates, there's another doorway reach sign. It's just a post-it. It's a simple post-it, but one my brain sees it's like, right, I want it to move. So talking about signaling, we're gonna go from the office, and really all these things are in my home too, in my non-workspace. But I'm gonna show you down here your exercise mat. So who has an exercise mat? And who mostly has it rolled up in the corner, maybe covered with cobwebs? So if you're not going to a place anymore where the habit of going to the place signals the movement, you know, I think I remember you know, usually they're like, how do I remind myself to move? Put it in your calendar. What's a calendar anymore? I don't even know. A calendar has almost no bearings on my life anymore. So what I have done is rolled out, what? My mat in my living room, clear some wall space, clear some floor space. You now have a home gym that's open 24 hours a day. And every time you walk by, go to it for two minutes, go to it for 17 minutes, don't think of your movement as something that you have to do all at once and then not again until tomorrow. Take the opportunity to do it all the time. So I have set out what? I've set out substitutions. So if you're thinking, oh, I would love exercise equipment, but I don't have any. It was at my gym or my yoga studio. Let me show you some easy substitutions. For a yoga block, a couple of books. See, they're about the same height. You can stack them to the height that you want. We use this um, foam roller for a lot of stuff in Nutritious Movement, a roll towel. Works great. Don't have a yoga strap, scarves or belts work fine. So it's really easy to gather your gear, is what I like to say. And I'm gonna set this down here, not let you look at the ceiling, there you go. The last thing I do for my exercise studio space is I make sure, just like the the exercise ball, if it's clunky and sort of gym looking, you're not really always interested in bringing it out into the spaces where you spend most of your time. I mean, even though no one else is there, you still usually like your own aesthetic and beautiful things. So I put my exercise gear in something that I find beautiful and then I leave it out all the time. I don't put it away. I don't put it in a closet where, you know, where where you're likely to not be reminded again that you wanted to use it, so put it out. Okay, one more thing. <sighs> Am I talking too fast? I feel like I might be talking too fast. I talk a lot and I try to fit a lot in and I'm almost out of time. So the last thing I wanna show you is low desks, low seating. So this is an office that often has children in it doing their work. You might find now that your home spaces, in addition to being workspaces, are also educational spaces. So that we've got now 
children needing dynamic school desks and you needing a dynamic work desk. So low tables are really, really great. And these are cushions that we've sort of built a couch out of. So they line the floor and then they line the back. So, so you can come down and bring your laptop to a low desk this way. And as you're sitting here, you can be using all of the positions that you used to go to class for to fit in. I can sit with, I can sit with my legs crossed. I can sit in a V stretch and I can have my computer in front of me while I do it. So instead of one particular desk or chair that does it all, you're thinking about creating an environment that allows you to move. I always, especially, I mean, not even especially now, always, but I think now it has more relevance, is setting up near open windows, natural light, fresh air, with the window of you where you uh, are taking care of more than just your musculoskeletal movement, you're really uh, adding in some other elements of nourishment as well. So these are just a few of my tips on how to sneak more movements uh, or signal more movements in via how you are setting up your environments, whether they are at home or at your office. And I'll sit around and look for a couple more questions. But yeah, I hope, I hope that you do it because it really is transformative. If, if you haven't been feeling well, if you've been feeling tight, change the shape of your body while you're doing the tasks that you're already doing for more movement and then make sure to take a walk. I guess if I were to give one more tip, it would be to take a walk every day and to not feel like it needs to be a long walk. I do two things. I identify one errand that I will do on foot every day and then if you can find a anywhere between a seven and a 15 minute loop from your house. So you don't have to drive anywhere. You don't have to change your clothes. Someplace where you can walk out your door and either walk around uh, your neighborhood or walk around your yard a certain amount of times or some sort of pathway where you have a sense of its distance or its time or its steps. And then you do that first thing in the morning, sort of sort of help your help things get circulating. Instead of going to your coffee for circulation, um, go to your walk for circulation, or better yet, take your coffee on a walk. And speaking of coffee or tea or some sort of morning beverage, which is really maybe one of the habits or routines so many um, of us might share, another way to, to, to squat down and get more change in shape is just to take that thing you reach for every morning and put it in your lowest cupboard so that you're really starting off the day with uh, not so much a bending over and touching your toes because that would be an exercise, which is also fine, but getting down to get something that you need would take it out of the exercise category and take it to adding movement to the thing I was gonna do anyway. And that's really the key to getting more movement. Thank you so much. I really liked getting a chance to uh, talk to you. I see your comments, so it's a, it's a little bit of a dialogue, but um, I'll look forward to seeing questions that you might have or if you have a setup that you want to share, please feel free to tag it online. And you can find out more about me at nutritiousmovement.com and right over there on the Nutritious Movement Instagram. Okay?